All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the NASA Countdown Clock mod, which was originally made back in the day by form user Bel Piro, but it has since been taken over by, of course, none other than Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is... Well, a countdown clock, but one that is complete with actual countdown voiceovers of historic missions from the past. And that is pretty freaking cool. Now, I have to admit, though, I've actually seen this mod uh, bouncing around on the forum for quite a long time. And I never really decided to give it a look until recently because I figured, no, oh, I mean, it's just a countdown clock. What use could it really be? But you know what? It actually adds a really fun, nice flair to your launches. And plus, I discovered it actually does have a practical element. So let's jump right to the launch pad where I have a rocket waiting. And let's check out how this whole thing does function. Now to start our NASA countdown clock, we simply need to go over to this new button right here, shaped like a little shuttle. And there we are. It brings up the NASA countdown down clock which is in fact modeled after the real world NASA countdown clock which just makes it all that much cooler in my mind now below the actual clock we do have a couple of buttons the first will of course begin the countdown and you know eventually launch your rocket here the second will actually allow you to select a sequence of events to happen depending on where the timer is and that's the practical element I was mentioning a few seconds ago and this this is a really cool feature here and then we have the settings button which is where we're gonna actually start as it's you know the settings for this little mod now the first option here is to either enable or disable the abort execute which I have to admit I have not actually been able to turn this off. Whenever I have disabled it, abort still shows. So I'll admit, I don't know if this little bit right here is completely functioning, but I mean, maybe it is and I'm just doing it wrong. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't actually know why you'd want to not have the abort execute function as it's quite useful. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Now, the next thing we have is the scale window. So if you don't like this countdown clock, being this size, you can actually make it smaller uh, just by, you know, scaling the window here. And as you can see, at 0.5 of the size, we have that. Now, it does kind of mess up the placement of the buttons. As you can see, it doesn't uh, clip it right onto the bottom there. And I'm actually a little bit sad that I can't make it bigger. I wouldn't mind that thing being just a little bit larger, but oh well, it just goes all the way up to 1.0. Now the next option here is to either enable or disable the sound of the countdown. And I don't know why you'd want to disable that because you actually get to hear countdowns of real historic missions and that's just cool. Now one slightly practical thing to the sound enabled or disabled is the actual time that this countdown clock counts down from. If you do disable sound, it will by default just start at T minus 15 seconds. And that is just the default for the mod. Now, if you have sound enabled, it will start the clock at wherever which one of these sound sets you choose actually started its countdown, you know, in the real launch of that thing which is pretty awesome so you have some actual pretty large variation in time depending on which of these sound sets you choose and uh, to choose these different sound sets well we just have these two buttons here to uh, navigate through them and we start of course with the classic Apollo countdown we then also have the Atlas 5 the Delta 2 the Falcon 9 a Kerbalized version which I'm gonna be honest is my least favorite of all of them because it's just 
Uh, it's just gibberish, so I, I don't really care for it, but maybe you would. We then also have the Long Mark, the Long Mark 2F, the Orbiter 1, Skylab, and then we are back to Apollo. And again, not only will this change the actual sound playing of the countdown, but will also change what time the countdown starts from. So let's actually go to the Falcon 9, as I think it's my favorite, mainly because it's the clearest. And if we actually do head back, and start this countdown, it will start, there we go, by T-28 seconds, and as you can hear in the background, and I'll shut up for a second, the actual countdown happening. 20 seconds. Second stage tanks pressing. First stage tank pressure nominal. Second now what we can do at any point though, as I interrupt the countdown, is hold. Hold, hold, hold. And there we go, we get a sound going again there of a different thing, rather than the countdown, a person going hold, hold, hold. Which I have to admit, I, I kind of like that one, I don't know why. But we also not only have a hold sound, we also have a unique abort sound, depending on which of those sound sets you choose. And if you hit abort here, it will abort the countdown, and then reset the clock back to zero. So if I click that now and listen to it play, We've had a cutoff. Liftoff did not occur. We've had a launch abort. We've had a launch abort standing by. And there we go, the sound finishes, and it reverts the clock back to zero, or null, or however you want to put it. And I love that. Again, it's going to be different to the sound you hear, depending on which of these you choose, and that is just fun. I really, really love that idea. Now let's stick with the Falcon 9 for, well, actually, no, you know what? Let's go to the Apollo. What the heck? And we're actually going to play around with the next function here, the launch sequence. Now this is the real practical bit. And what this allows you to do, if we click the button, is choose for a stage to be activated at a certain second point, starting of course at T minus 10 seconds, all the way down to a one, which effectively is launch. So say for instance, we want the main engine to start at 10 seconds, we just need to hit set here, and then go over and actually click in to that stage seven there, and bam, there we go. You can see it's marked now stage seven. And if we ever do want to actually set that again, you can just hit set, click another thing, it will change. And of course we can also clear it out entirely so that nothing happens. But let's let's uh, stick with uh, set seven there. And then say at five seconds, we start up the solid rocket boosters. And then at one second is the final release of the uh, launch clamps there. And we have our rocket going. And we actually do have a little button here for engine control, which you can either activate or deactivate. And basically the, uh, the engine control acts as a, ooh, what's the best way to put it? A, a more realistic launch. If it's enabled, the mod will start your throttle down at the bottom, basically at zero, and at the last four seconds, it will throttle up. Now, you'll notice something when we go to launch, when it hits the 10 second mark, it basically flares the engine up real quick, so the throttle kind of flares up, but then after that, it goes back down, and at the four second mark, it will begin to throttle up to full. Now, if we don't have that on, you are in complete control of the throttle. But I'm gonna take my hand completely off the keyboard here and let the computer control the throttle and control our stages here, which is a fun little practical element. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna hit launch and I'm gonna shut up here so you can hear the entire thing go. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, liftoff, we have a liftoff, all engine running. Tower cleared. 
And there we go. That is the end of the sound for the Apollo launch. And you notice once we did launch, the clock actually did shut off. So you no longer have it obstructing your view. You're just good to go to do your flight. And that... That's a wonderful thing. Let's revert to launch, though, as I just want to quickly show off some of the other sounds. We're not going to go through all of them, but I do just want to give you a sampling of things. Let's actually go to the Kerbalized one real quick for you to hear that. <laughs> And you'll notice nothing actually occurred on this one this time when we reached zero because I didn't actually set anything in the sequencer. We reverted back to the start of our flight, which of course did revert us back to when the clock was, you know, without any sequence. And we can reset the clock back to its, you know, normal state by just turning it on and off here and, uh, you know, reset the sequence as you see fit, which is fun to do. But let's actually just leave it as is and just go to one more sound. Let's do... Yeah, Orbiter 1. There we go. And we'll do a launch. Range is green. 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff. Which, of course, we don't because, again, nothing in the sequence. <laughs> but it is still fun nonetheless. I really do like having those sounds. Now, at this point, of course, we can still control this craft ourselves. I can hit spacebar and start that next uh, sequence of events. But, you know, eh, I actually really love using the launch sequencer because it's just entertaining to actually have all that done for you automatically. You can just keep your hands off the keyboard, set up your launch sequence, and then, you know, have it go and have some fun, which is pretty cool. Now that is really, I think, all I have to talk about with this mod. We have the different sounds and, <laughs> yeah, whenever you go between settings, it seems to uh, like to launch things and set the engine back if you don't properly reset the flight itself. That is one oddity that if you don't revert back to the beginning of the launch, it gets a little bit of a mind of its own. But uh, yeah, so just to recap, we have our wonderful settings in here. We have a variety of different sound sets for you to play with. We have the beautiful launch sequencing system, which allows you to, you know, set up your actual launch and do what all you need to do at the right time. And then we have just the simple launch button which just makes the magic happen. And that is wonderful. So if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, and I would definitely suggest that you go and do that, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. 28.